IonQ reported earnings today and they're up 5.8% after hours. They beat on their revenue and we're gonna go into kind of the whole earnings picture and we're gonna pick apart what this means and what the implications are for 2026 and beyond. So this is gonna be specifically focused on IonQ's earning, technical roadmap, and what was said. So we're gonna look at the earnings themselves, the transcript, I've highlighted a few key quotes and the after hours price movement. Wall Street, hedge funds, retail traders, they liked what they were hearing. The stock is up almost 6% after hours. Our technical achievements continue to solidify IonQ's quantum platform as the most complete and powerful in the world with a correspondingly larger addressable global market. Now with 3.5 billion of pro forma net cash, we are continuing to reap the compounding benefits of our scale and momentum advantages entrenching our position as the dominant force in quantum. I'm confident in our ability to deliver growth and value creation for IonQ shareholders. Financial highlights. IonQ recognizes revenue of $39.9 million for the third quarter, which is 37% above the top end of previously provided range and represents a 220% year over year growth. Cash, cash equivalents and investments were 1.5 billion as of September 30th and 3.5 billion pro forma for the 2 billion equity offering that closed October 14th. The net loss was 1.1 billion, but the adjusted EBITDA loss was 48.9 million. There's a lot to unpack there. And of course, like I'm not a financial expert. I'm not a financial analyst. I just kind of follow these companies, the stocks and the technology. One of the biggest knocks on quantum companies is their revenues. So if INQ is able to show accelerating revenue here, then that's a boost for the whole sector. And of course, the, starting this week, we are seeing a lot of selling in quantum stocks. This remains a very speculative and very polarized type of two-way trade with this quantum investing. So there was a lot kind of piling up for this INQ earnings release and for them to come out with sort of their similar style of being very aggressive with their roadmap and beating on revenue was kind of exactly what I was looking for with INQ. Before we go into the transcript, if you guys don't follow me yet on X, uh, I have been using X more and I did post um, a pretty long tweet about INQ on November 3rd. And this tweet by my standards, since I have a fairly small account over there, um, what went closer to viral as it had over 54,000 views and a lot of engagements. And basically what I'm saying in this, in this tweet, I don't know what to call it in this X, I believe that INQ could be the NVIDIA of the quantum sector. And I go on to explain why, but it's essentially because they're getting their tentacles into all different areas of quantum. They have 3 billion in cash, and they've made these amazing acquisitions that are very important for them to hit their technical milestones. They're not just stopping at computing. They're also doing space. They're also doing sensing with their acquisitions. And it's very impressive. And so I was talking a little bit about this. And, and then I noticed that the next morning uh, that Martin Screlly had actually re re-X'd, retweeted this. And to all of his followers, he didn't make any comments. And a lot of like the, the quantum bears came out and responded to it. And, and I, I just, I just believe this, you guys, I, I believe that INQ, if they're able to hit on their technical milestones and bring us those bigger fault tolerant quantum computers in the next one, two, three years, then this is going to be a very different conversation very quickly. What we got today was confirmation that two qubit gate fidelity was one of the last dominoes to fall. And I think that if there's one quote that is very important, now we're over on the transcript to remember or take away from this earnings call is we are the first company in history that can proudly say that all of our key technical milestones have been achieved. And we are now focused on only engineering scaling to achieve full fault tolerance. So if you follow this 
very closely like I do, you understand the gravity of a statement like that. Now, their technical milestones, all, all the very difficult science and physics and, and, and those type of things, they're behind them. And now it's scaling. It's scaling to achieve that full fault tolerance. So that is a big shift and something that I think could be easily missed because a lot of things were said in this, in this earnings call. With over 1,100 patents pending and granted, we are proud of our intellectual property moat, which has expanded 30 times since our first IPO. Huge patent portfolio, and it does look like it will give them a moat. I mean, it's just, it, it does uh, look really good. And with our well-established semiconductor fabrication approach, the course is clear for us to deliver each generation of our systems. So this is something else that INQ needed to do in this earnings call and the Q&A is they needed to provide clarity, not only on existing technology, but where this is going, where revenue is going, where these machines are going, where the technical milestones are going. And when you have Chris Balance of Oxford Ionics come on and, and tell you the course is clear, uh, I don't know what, what more wall street needs um i'm uh, to to see or recognize kind of where this is going and this is why when i tweeted i also said i bought a lot of the iron q dip today um and i was buying a lot of quantum stocks this week i mean i i am the quantum bull but this week especially on these dips i've i've been picking up more quantum emotion i picked up iron q i there are a lot of deals and I couldn't resist, but IonQ especially, I was wanting to make sure that I have shares long-term of this company because to me, it's very obvious that they are best positioned to commercialize quantum in the near term. So the, the 2026 system, so a year from now, or two months, we're going to be in 2026, but if we look at our 2026 256 qubit product to match that in terms of raw horsepower, you need about 10 to the power of 20 H100 NVIDIA GPUs. The power consumption would be a billion terawatts. Very interesting to see that we're starting to kind of see those comparisons uh, between the, the quantum computing power and the GPU. These 2026 systems aren't just going to be more powerful than the world's largest supercomputers. They're going to be more powerful than the largest supercomputers humanity will ever build, even assuming hundreds or thousands of years of classical technology progress. So very bold statement. We are obviously on the precipice of history here. And that is what's so fascinating about this conversation and why INQ is such an interesting company because they are branding themselves as a leader of the space. They're instilling confidence into investors. They, they say here, I'm confident in our ability to deliver growth and value creation for INQ shareholders in 2026. So you can either take that and, and, and believe that they're gonna execute on their technical milestones, or, or not. But to me, I look at it and it's it's very clear with their two qubit gate 99.99% fidelity. That was a major and massive technical milestone for them to overcome. And that gives them and that gives all of us that critical visibility to their tech runway. Right. And so what does it mean to be the NVIDIA of quantum? Right. It just means that Think of NVIDIA and, and think of the ecosystem or like the think of NVIDIA as the sun of its own universe. And there's all the hyperscalers and the AI companies and all of the other big tech companies that use their chips. Well, INQ very well could be a similar type of company in the quantum space. If you're wanting quantum sensing, you're going to go to INQ. If you want to have secure communications via space. You're going to go to INQ. If you want to run your software right now, you're probably using IBM system. But if INQ is able to quickly accelerate, like they're saying, then there is a non-zero chance that they're going to be able to deliver. And and this is the, the kicker with all of this. The performance jump 
when you add qubits is not linear, there's exponentially more power. So we're still in this period of history where we're figuring out how to use these machines. A company like INQ has the money, the talent, and the execution to build powerful machines. And there's gonna be a lot of talented people out there in the world that are gonna figure out how to use those machines as well. So don't underestimate that either. I think it's an incredible earnings for INQ. I think it shows and validates the strength of their company and my thesis that they will become the NVIDIA of the quantum space remains unchanged. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next one. If you would like to support the quantumbull.com and the Quantum Bull YouTube channel, I do have YouTube memberships here. Each of them has exclusive perks. The Gold Bull membership gets you into our Discord with trade alerts, and we have a lot of fun over there. So I invite you to come join as a channel member.